Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. We have the pleasure of sitting down with fullback Pat Ricard. And, and Pat, playing on Christmas Day, first thing I got to know is what does Christmas morning look like when you're on the road in San Francisco? It looks like you wake up in a hotel room alone. <laughs> um, but hopefully. Do you get a mini tree? Like a tiny, do you pack a mini tree? Can you set that up in there? <laughs> no, I don't know. It's a strictly a business trip at that point, you know? Okay. Yeah, okay. we'll celebrate Christmas after. Okay. Yeah. Well, how do you, what do you, when do you celebrate Christmas at the house? How do you um, do it? So my wife is actually going to go back home to spend it with, you know, friends and family because she's not going to make the trip to the game. So I'm just going to celebrate it with her Tuesday after we get back at like five in the morning or whatever time we get back, I might take a nap <laughs> and then we'll open presents. Yeah. Nice. nice. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm just, you know, when, when that game comes out on the schedule and you see that it's Christmas day, I think, you know, how, how do you like, do you care? Do you, do you, as players, like, do you think about that stuff? Do you talk about that stuff? Like, is that at all something that is a discussion point in the locker room? Um, I don't really think so. I mean, the schedule, it is what it is. And, you know, I think being an NFL player, we, we make a lot of sacrifices for our families. And, um, and yeah, I don't think it really matters. I think, if anything, I think some guys get more excited because it's such an honor to play on a holiday, you know, either Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, and it happened to be a very good team. We knew they would be very good when the schedule came out. So um, I think it's more, I think more excited, you know, and mm -hmm. Christmas, we can, we can figure that out. <laughs> yeah, because this I think this is a little more important. Well, there's no better Christmas present than a win over the 49ers. That's got to be the best. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm asking Santa this year. <laughs> yeah, what's the second best though? If it, what's the perfect gift for a big old block and fullback? <laughs> like, what's at the top of your your uh, list for Santa? I don't know. It's it's the win, and then probably just it's just a healthy Christmas. I think. A healthy I think, Christmas. Yeah, that's, I think health is probably the most important thing. So. All right. All right. Well, uh, you have not been giving your opponents very good health this year. Um, <laughs> you have been kicking some booty out there. Uh, what, what has been the adjustment for you this year in kind of, you know, it was a different role in a new offense. Uh, you're, you know, playing a lot at the end of the line of scrimmage and just taking on D ends, you know, tight ends. It's been a change. How have you enjoyed that change? What's been different? Yeah, so, you know, I think that I had to show monkey in because I had off-season surgery, so I wasn't really be able to do anything the whole off-season, so I knew that I had to just kind of just show him what I could do. Yeah. Um, and pretty much whatever is asked of me, just try to do the best I can. Um, and, you know, I always knew that, that there was a role for me in this offense. I just had to go out there and show it and improve it. And um, I, I really do enjoy playing this offense. You know, there's a lot of similarities of things I've done in the past, but, you know, I think I have been a little more in line blocking, mm -hmm. which is something I've done. But um, if that's what's going to be asking me all the time, that's fine. If I have to block a DN and one-on-one -on -one pass rush or block them on a gap scheme run or go out in some space and block a corner to the to the benches. <laughs> I saw you know, that one. Right, so, <laughs> um, no, it's been a lot of fun. I think Munkin's using me the right way, and I just I just keep trying to show him what I can do to – for him to kind of sprinkle me in, sprinkle me in in different ways, and um, use me as an advantage. I've been really impressed with the way that you've carved out your your niche in this offense, and I, like I I want to go back to training camp and the off season when you're working way, your way back from the off season hip injury, and when the Ravens hired Monken and and he talked from the very start about how this offense is going to be more of a space based offense, certainly in comparison to what the Ravens did previously with Greg Roman. I mean, the question was like what is your role going to be? And I think that you certainly were, you probably had that question yourself to a certain extent. Right. What were you thinking at that time? Like, were you nervous at all? How, how did you handle the, the change and the thought process that went into it? Yeah. So I had to get surgery in my hip. So that was, that was the, my biggest focus was making sure I was healthy. Cause if I'm not healthy, I can't do anything anyway. So it was get healthy and then, you know, just kind of figure out like, okay, we have a new offensive coordinator. What's my role going to be? So it was like, why don't we just like, since you can't do anything right now, the whole off season and most of training camp, why don't we just have you start working with the offensive line mm -hmm. and just see how it looks there. And maybe if that's something we can do, but at the end of the day, I think it was more to just improve 
my knowledge of the game and more technique of, you know, pass protection, what the O-line does, how technique works in the run game, all these different things. That's only going to help me, mm -hmm. right? So that I think that was, that was kind of like the biggest idea and takeaway from that. And then it was just getting healthy, getting on the field and just really learning the offense. Really, you know, I was still studying all the tight ends, still talking to the tight end coaches and that whole time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always, I always kind of, even in training camp, seeing what the tight ends were doing, what they were at, being asked to do, I was like, I, I know I can do that. I know I can do all that stuff. Um, and it was really just a matter of going in there. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous or anything like that. I, I know what I'm capable of. Um, been playing, you know, six years here and I've had very good years. So I knew the player I, that I am. So it wasn't, it wasn't like a panic button or mm -hmm. anything, like, anything like that. Um, you know, I can only control the things I can control at the end of the day. Right. I'm curious, did you, how much of you thought maybe guard is my position moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm kind of getting a little later in my career. I'm really good at what I do currently. It's like, do I want to make that jump and see if I can do that? It was like, let's kind of just test it out maybe a little bit in training camp, see how I like it and all that stuff. And, you know, I didn't get any live reps in practice because I came so late in camp that I wanted to make sure I was ready to go um, for what I'm doing now. Right. Um, but I definitely got a more of an insight on, on everything and what they do and all the techniques and stuff like that. Yeah. You talk about that block to the bench where hmm. uh, you literally took the guy like two feet from the bench. Uh, which, <laughs> that was Chargers game? Uh, Right? Was Rams. That was Rams, Rams yeah. Okay. yeah. Which I, I'll give you credit to at the end. It could have been it was could have been really easy for you to actually put him on the bench and you kinda you let up. It was a headsy yeah. play. Yeah. It was a, how bad did you want to put him on the bench? Um <laughs> pretty bad, but I think <laughs> I think I think the job was done already. The job was done. Yeah, right, I don't think right. he's making the play. I didn't want to get penalized. I didn't want to get another yeah. fine. I didn't wanna, you know, bad things to happen after already a good play. Right, right. Smart. Smart. Right. What's going through your mind and how much of your game is focused on that kind of, look, I'm going to get the job done, but on top of that, I'm going to make sure that you know I got the job done. Right. I mean, I think... I think when you're playing fullback in, in today's offense, you have to you have to be like an exclamation point when you're on the field. You can't just go out there and just like kind of get the job done because they they would probably just use tight ends to do that because tight ends, you know, if they're blocking as a fullback, they can get they can kind of get the job done, but they also can run all these routes and do all these other things. So like like for my value, it's like I'm going to be that physical presence for the team. I'm going to make sure that I'm finishing my blocks. I'm playing to the whistle. And that's just kind of how I've always played football is mm -hmm. play to the whistle, play every snap as hard as I can because you just never know when that snap is your last snap. So I try to just leave everything on the field whenever I'm on it. Do you think it's important for the fullback to kind of be the enforcer? Yes, I think so. Because <laughs> why else are we out there? You know, right. you have to – you need someone like that. And, you know, I'm happy to be that guy. Can yeah. you tell us a story about how a defender – has reacted to that. <laughs> so I've noticed that defenders don't like being blocked to the whistle. They really don't. So mm -hmm. like they're usually trying to throw a punch late or they'll get in my face and start talking trash. But it's like, why are you talking trash? Like I just blocked you 10 <laughs> yards away from the ball. I think they just get more annoyed that I'm playing so hard or blocking to the whistle. Cause right. a lot of guys, they'll just like kind of block for a couple steps and then let up and then the defender will run to the ball. And I don't want my defender anywhere near the ball. Right. right? There's two actually that stand out to me. One, we had you mic'd against the Patriots last year, mm -hmm. and you were, I think, playfully and maybe not so playfully giving Jude on the business at times. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's a good one. Yeah, so whenever I now play against ex-Ravens that I was teammates with, right. I always, like... I always compare myself in practice like, okay, Matt Judon's a great player here, right? So I'm always wondering, like, how would I d go against Matt Judon if he's on another team? Mm -hmm. So when I go against Matt Judon against the Patriots, it's like, okay, here's my challenge. Here's my opportunity to, like, see if I can actually block this guy. And personally, knowing him, it's, like, more comfortable to, like, really block him and, like, talk to him and stuff like that. So, like, he's an all-pro player. He's been amazing with the Patriots, amazing here. So, like, when I'm blocking him well, I'm right. going to, you know, kind of let him know. Zedarius, I saw a little same bit Same thing with Zedarius, you know. <laughs> when I played CJ Moza last year, week one against yep. the Jets, it was yep. the same thing. 
you know, it's always it's always fun going against ex teammates. I, I also on kind of the reverse end of it, I noticed when Jadavion Clowney got here for the first time, and <laughs> he saw you at practice, and this is before he was suited up, and he was like, Patrick Ricard is huge, and he was like, I'm glad I don't have to go against him anymore. Like I, he was a nuisance. He basically was like, you were a nuisance to him when he was on the Browns, and he's glad he doesn't have to go against yeah, you anymore. I mean, the failings likewise. You know, <laughs> Clowney is just he's like just he's just a absolute freak in terms of like how he moves his body and how he plays in defenses where he's so hard to block played against the Texans I think we pl maybe played him when he was in Seattle may not been but the last couple of years against the Browns he's always hard to block and for him to say that about me I think it's I think it's super cool because I remember being up at Maine and I'm seeing his highlights on ESPN for <laughs> a hundred weeks straight of that hit against South Carolina against hit. Michigan yeah, yeah so yeah, like yeah. for now him to have those high praises against me it's it's uh it's really cool well it's always fun when I watch the film because there's always a handful of blocks that you make that are just they're just fun to watch. Is there any favorite block of yours from this year, maybe from your career that really stands out in your mind? Um I'm trying to think. I mean it's it's whenever I, I really like just one on one block just like pancake someone I think those yeah. are the my favorite type of block. So this last game and I had to we were just running gap scheme and I stepped down and the DN slanted out to me and it was just me and him and I was just blocking and I put him right in the ground and then Gus just hits it right off me and almost scores. Right. I think those are the kind of blocks that I, I always remember and, and uh, always try to do. Yeah. So, so this game uh, on Sunday against Jacksonville, the running game puts up 251 yards on the ground. That's a nice day. And 200 of those yards were in the second half. So you guys really got it rolling in the second half. Do you think that your this offense is built to have really successful running games down the stretch here? I don't know if you're going to put up 250 every single game, but do you feel good about this offense's ability to have success on the ground down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, ever since I've been here, we've always had a strong running game, and it always starts with their offensive line, and I think the more they keep playing together, the more they're going to be in sync and, and really moving guys, and we've always had great backs, and we still have great backs, and we always – have Lamar Jackson, which just <laughs> makes it, it – it's very challenging for defenses to, to handle. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's really important in December to have a good running game, and I think that's been our staple, and our passing game has been doing really well. And together, it's just it's really hard to stop. So, it's, you know, we always look every week as a challenge. We know last week Jacksonville had a very good run game. Um, I didn't realize second half we put up that many yards. I think we were just, you know, one play at a time just trying to – keep drives going and making sure we're on the field and you know we had a good four minute offense at the end um, that's how we always want to finish games is us on our own terms running the ball and going into victory formation um, and we know that San Fran's also a really good defense so it's gonna be another challenge for us obviously the loss of Keaton was a, it was a tough blow in this past game as as a key part of this run game how do you look at the guys you have now, what you have going on, and, and how you kind of make up for that loss. Yeah, I mean, Keaton's a very special player. I mean, to be an undrafted guy and for him to come on the scene like he did and just show his speed and his playmaking ability, it's going to be a huge loss for us. Um, but at the end of the day, we still have everyone that we need. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that Melvin's going to be filling his spot as of right now, and mm -hmm. he, he's a great back. So, I mean, I don't really see too much changing in our running game. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of us executing the plays and you know coaches always give us great schemes so it's really just us just executing do you take pride when you see other undrafted guys having success I mean, you, you pointed that out with yeah. keaton like that's your story yeah yeah i mean it's just it's always a cool story just because it's it's so hard it's so hard like being undrafted you only have so many opportunities so like you met if you only get one and that's it and you don't make the most of it then it's like you might start bouncing around and just be out of the league mm -hmm. and it's just kind of how it is so for Keen to get his opportunities and just to like do what he did and like like so explosive so fast um that it's it's always it's always exciting i'm always rooted for guys like that absolutely <laughs> If I were to give you have given you truth serum, you know, six, seven years ago, okay, when you're coming out of Maine, right, and you're a defensive lineman yep. at that time, like, would you have expected, could you have envisioned this scenario where you are a multi-time pro bowler and one of the best players in the league at your position on offense, by the way? Um, no. <laughs> no. I... Just, just, getting, just getting signed was a big deal for me, and then I think... I've always I've always had a high belief in myself and always knew that if I worked hard, you know, a lot of things are possible. So like, I 
was just hoping to to stick and, and, and make plays and eventually, you know, earn my spot and to see how my career has gone. It's It's been a, nothing short but a, amazing. And it's just a credit to the coaches giving me the opportunities and, and support my, you know, coaches and players and my family because, you know, learning offense was a big challenge in itself and then just playing the NFL alone. So it was, it was definitely a lot of first and playing both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's it's definitely been crazy, and I'm just, you know, grateful every day and just trying to just keep this thing going. You look at the 49ers and Kyle Juszczyk, right? That's a different kind of fullback, and it, and it seemed like that was almost the way that maybe f- the fullback position was going to evolve, right? He lines up in the slot and does a lot as a pass catcher and whatnot. You know, you're a different type of player and, and one that is pretty rare in the NFL. Is that something that you feel like you want to carry that torch and say there is there is a spot for people like me in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I think the fullback position nowadays, it's like, it's not, it can't be traditional anymore. Like, you have to be able to do so many different things. And, you know, I'm more uh, on the blocking side of, you know, being able to block in the backfield, on the line, pass protection, but I also, I'm also have hands I can catch. I might not be able to run these routes like Juice can. So I think You know, it's just showing that, like, if you're going to use a fullback, like, he needs to be a unique player that can do a bunch of different things well. And then Mm -hmm. just how to utilize him in a certain offense, right? Right. So it's like, Juice, he's fast. He has good ball skills. He he can take handoffs. He can take balls under center. You know, he's still effective as as a blocker. Mm -hmm. I'm just the other side. I'm more of a blocking dominant and can still do things in the passing game um but yeah there's it's it's like just to have like a fullback just line up in the eye and just run all these things it's just it's just challenging nowadays you have to be able to do a lot of things well have you ever thought about maybe changing the actual name of your position like not fullback <laughs> not tight end but hammer <laughs> <laughs> just i play hammer right, right. i mean i kind of like it, it almost yeah no i mean it's almost like the fullback name is now like almost like a, it's hybrid, right? You know, you have to do a bit of everything. That's right. kind of what it is now. So, I'll I'll take hammer. That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's like, like a hammer position. Right. It's like you I know the hammer position. Yeah, yeah. like uh, what, was it Dante Hall back in the day said he was position X, and even uh, yes. Debo Samuel said wide back. You know, there you wide, go. Right. wide back. So right. let's keep it creative. Well, you know, going back to Juice for a second, um, you know, you guys, let's just stick with the fullback term for the time being. But <laughs> but you two have really basically established yourselves as the two best fullbacks in the game. You know, you've gone to basically every Pro Bowl for the last several years. You on the AFC side, him on the NFC side. Of course, he started his career here and, and you ultimately ended up re- replacing him as the fullback here. Is there any kind of like rivalry be, based on both of you desiring to show that you are the best fullback in the game? Um, maybe like early in my career, I would kind of like compare us just because I'm trying to like prove myself. But now, now that we're both so established, it's just like he does what he does really well, and I do what I really yeah well. And mm-hmm. it's just like you have to admire both because they're different. Mm-hmm. You can't like. You can't say one of us are better than another because we do things so we do things differently, right? right? So it's like um, I don't think it's really comparing anymore. It's more yeah. admiring. Like I, I appreciate the things he does, and I think he appreciates the things that I do. Right. And I think we just try to just show out for the position, right? So how do you approach this game? Uh, obviously, a massive game. Two really good teams. You know, people are going to be calling it the Super Bowl preview, <laughs> all that stuff. What do you get? What's the mindset of the team as you go into this game? Yeah, I mean. In the last couple of games and then the rest of our schedule is just like it's like a playoff mentality you know and and for me i just try to take it one game at a time i don't try to make any game way bigger than it has to be like okay super bowl preview on christmas blah 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 all that stuff right so it's like you just have to just take it one day at a time make sure you have the game plan down you practice well you take care of your body and then you go out and you play football and right. i think that's i think that's what we've been doing um and i think we're a very mature team like we understand you know where we are and where we're going so it's like just one day at a time at this right. point mm-hmm. i kind of think all right here's another idea for you okay <laughs> i kind of think we should really embrace the grinch role 
right? You go into their house, you go down, <laughs> come down the chimney, you steal their presents, and you vamoose. That sounds pretty good. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, good. I kind of think a Grinch co- like outfit when you get there, you know, for the arrivals. <laughs> I feel like we should really lean well, into Well, Pat this. has That's done funny. the, uh, you've done the Christmas sweater with the lights yes. on it, mm, you know, yeah. so maybe you, you put a little Grinch twist on it this yeah. year. Maybe, yeah. I mean, just an idea. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll, I'll wear the sweater and get a, a Grinch Grinch mask. Yeah, yeah. there yeah. you go. That's pretty funny. All right, Pat. Well, good luck, buddy. <laughs> Hammer, Thank you. Pat Ricard. Yeah, appreciate it. appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you. Well, welcome back into the Seat Geek studio. Really enjoyed sitting down with Patrick Ricard here on the lounge. Also, we want to give a shout out to our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, which is an official sports betting partner of the Baltimore Ravens. They've got a limited time promo running. You don't want to miss this. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use the promo code FLOCK. If you're a new customer, you can get a deposit bonus up to $1,000. Again, the promo code is FLOCK on DraftKings. You need to be at least 21 or older to play and physically present in Maryland. For help, visit mdgamblinghelp.org or call one 800 gambler so you and i are going to be home for this game we're not going to miss christmas with the young children thank <laughs> you to those going out to san francisco but you know it would be great at home a little tito's handmade vodka <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so is this uh, i'm I'll, guessing it after the game <laughs> or during after. <laughs> tito's handmade vodka on game day pour me in coach from a seat in the stands to the best seat on the couch root for your favorite team with your favorite team spirit no matter who's on your roster, lineup, or lucky jersey, make Tito's your first round bottle pick. Whose house? Tito's house. Find cocktail recipes for every fan at t- titosvodka.com. 40% alcohol by volume, namely 80 proof. Crafted to be savored responsibly. Responsibly after the game. You're right. You're right. <laughs> responsibly after the game. So this is going to be an awesome game, Garrett. Yeah. And we're going to be celebrating, hopefully, afterwards uh, with a little Christmas midnight you know, mid, what's it? <laughs> nightcap? What's yeah, it? nightcap. Yeah, there nightcap. You go. There you go. Um, you know, I get the sense that the Ravens are really locked in from a mental standpoint for this game, and of course, every week, that's the that's the goal, right? And I think they have been, but there's a different element to this game because the Ravens are underdogs, really, for the first time in quite some time. Yeah, <laughs> and. I expect that they're banging that drum all week long. The nobody thinks we can win. We're on Christmas in their house. Got to travel across the country. Everybody thinks the 49ers are going to the Super Bowl. Think they're the best team by a mile in the league. You know, no, everybody's counting us out. Let's go in there and prove them wrong. And the Ravens, I think, have relished their road role being on the road all year long. They have the best record in the NFL on the road, 6-1. and one. And this time, in this game, there's even more spice to that. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, on Monday, when John Harbaugh was talking about the game, he brought up the underdog point. You know, yep. we're going to be the underdogs. So I'm sure the conversation that is going on behind the scenes is focused on that narrative. And also the fact that like, okay, the NFL scheduled you across the country on Christmas night. You got to spend a couple days in a hotel room. You know, we're going out here. You might as well win, make it a nice flight home. (laughs) Right. And you know, the, the odds are stacked against you for factors that are outside of your control. Mm -hmm. But now you can go out there and shock the world, prove everybody wrong. No one believes in you. I think that like the whole, no one believes in you thing, you know, every team in the league loves to, to, to latch onto that. Mm-hmm. And the, and the truth is that there haven't been too many opportunities for the Ravens to latch onto that because yep. they're a team that's favored in most of their games. They're one of the best teams in the league. So there are people that believe in them, but this is an opportunity where you can really play the nobody believes where it in actually card. works. It's yeah. Actually you kind can, of true. You, you can play that card and you're going on the road. I, I think all of that is going to be a factor in the game. I also think that like this team is, they're just focused. I just think that they are focused. Mm-hmm. And for this game, for the last game, they came out of the bye. They knew the stretch that they had in front of them. Mm-hmm. They understand that they're the number one overall seed right now, and they're leading the way in the AFC North. But they also understand that they don't have much ground to lose. And so I think that they're a really locked-in team. I've loved the mentality mm-hmm. really since the bye week, and this week included. Yeah, I completely agree. And this is going to be a, obviously a huge challenge. And let's break down a little bit of what's going to make it such a tough game for the Ravens. And I'll start here. I think that 
the 49ers offense with all that they do in Kyle Shanahan's very creative kind of unique offense that has evolved over the years from his father. And the Ravens have some familiarity with that, but it is a difficult offense to defend for sure. And especially with all the pre-snap motion, the screens, all that kind of stuff. Any player can line up in any spot. We talked about Kyle Juszczyk being in the slot. You know, uh, Christian McCaffrey can line up outside. They line up people everywhere, kind of like the Ravens defense lines up everywhere. For those reasons, I think that it's a huge challenge for the Ravens linebackers, particularly their inside linebackers, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, and then Kyle Hamilton playing primarily in the slot to really communicate pre-snap all that's going on and understand what the 49ers are going to do because from a scheme standpoint, they're really good at getting guys wide open. I mean, honestly, the 49ers don't really have a weakness on offense. Their scheme is great. Kyle Shanahan is viewed as one of the best offensive coaches yep. in the game. His family has a long history of being a great offensive mind, and the Ravens understand that. You know, the Kubiak system is all part of the Kyle, Han- yep. but the the Mike Shanahan system and now the Kyle Shanahan system. And then from a talent standpoint, you have weapons everywhere. Christian McCaffrey, who's maybe the best running back in the game, Debo Samuel, who's such an X factor, Yuschek as well, Brandon Ayuk, mm-hmm. and then you have a Hall of Fame player uh, and Trent Williams, a left tackle, George and then Brock, Kittle. George Kittle, of course, one of the best tight ends, and then Brock Purdy, who Mr. Irre- Irrelevant a year ago, but now steps in, and you know he's the top guy right now in the MVP conversation. Did you mention Debo Samuel? Did you I did hit Debo. Okay. I did hit Debo. Right. One so, of the more unique players in the league. So you have all of these weapons around. You have a good offensive line. You have the scheme, and so like this is this is as talented of an offense as the Ravens are going to face. But the Ravens have a great defense, and Mike mm-hmm. McDonald is viewed as one of the best young coordinators in this game. Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen are the best inside linebacker tandem in the league. They've got Justin Matabike having a career season. So, like, the Ravens, I don't think, are going to shy away from that challenge. They're no, not, not going to be scared of that. I think there's going to be a lot of talk this week about we respect them, but we're not going to kowtow to them. Sure. We're not going to bow down. And it's strength versus strength. You know, the, the Ravens, what the Ravens do well defensively is what the 49ers do well offensively. And so something's got to give here. And and I do think that the Ravens inside linebackers are going to be a huge part of that, especially when it comes to defending Christian McCaffrey. I think that the running game, because one area where I think that the Ravens have been a little susceptible in recent weeks is the yards they're giving up on the ground. Mm-hmm. They gave up too many yards to Kyron Williams. Early in the game, Travis Etienne was having some success. Mm-hmm. Not quite as much as Kyron Williams the week before, and yeah. they cleaned it. They cleaned it up in both games as the game went along. But still, you don't want to see opening drives where you're getting 60 yards on the ground. For sure, you, you want to limit that. And I think it'll be. I'm really curious to see how the 49ers and Shanahan, who does a great job of scripting the opening couple series. Mm-hmm. Does he come out and go run, run, run? Mm-hmm. That's what McVeigh did two weeks ago. Right. Does he ter- try to take that same approach? Does he try to? get Debo involved or, or kill involved. And I just am really curious to see how the game opens up. Yeah. Because again, I think that that's an area where the Ravens need to clean up because mm-hmm. if they're giving up, I mean, the truth is if you're giving up four or five, six yards on the ground, then it's going to be a long day. Yeah. You, you just, you can't, you can't allow that type of first down success. If they're looking at second and four every time, well, and then it's going to be difficult. And then the 49ers really get into their play action passing game. And, and they're so good at that. Brock Purdy is so good at that. Uh, that if if you're not shutting down the run, then you have a, you're going to have a really tough time. It's going to be tough sledding because they can just start working off that. Christian McCaffrey, his abilities as a receiver become even more dangerous. And so I think that you're right. Stopping, slowing down their run game and really putting this on Brock Purdy's shoulders, right? When Brock Purdy lost, they lost three straight games, two of which the AFC North opponents, by the way, the Bengals and the Browns. Brock Purdy threw five interceptions in those games. Mm -hmm. So if you can put the game on Brock Purdy's shoulders, I mean, that's not to take anything away from Brock Purdy, but I think that he's kind of the maestro orchestrating this, this offense and really getting the hands, the ball in the hands of his playmakers. Brock Purdy isn't a guy that you look back and say, wow, man, he made some special, ridiculous throws. He might be the MVP though. He might be the MVP. I mean, but I think what his strength is and, and look, the game manager, I'm not going to sit here and call him a game manager because Mm -hmm. there's become a a negative connotation of that. Right. There probably shouldn't be because he's doing such a great job of doing that. Right. With all these weapons around him. But if you put Brock Purdy consistently in third and long situations, 
as with any quarterback, mm-hmm. really, then I think the Ravens stand a much better chance. Yeah, I mean, I think any quarterback, like you said, in, in third and long, it's going to be difficult to overcome that. I, I think that an area of this game that I really think could end up being pretty important. The 49ers are so good at breaking tackles with Debo Samuel in oh, particular, sure. George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey. You have to, you have to tackle. It's like fundamentals. It's simple stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and, and to some degree, they get so many yards after catch. How many times have you seen Debo Samuel catch a ball five yards or in the backfield and t- take it yep. 40, 50 yards. He's done that throughout his career and throughout the season. So yep. Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith, Kyle Hamilton, there's going to be a lot of activity in the middle of the field, mm-hmm. and they cannot miss tackles, which I has not been an a, issue. A, a yeah. good job of that. This I think year. this team has been, been a really a, good tackling team, but I think it's going to be that's going to be challenged this week against this 49ers offense yep. that's so great at breaking tackles, and I think that that's going to be an important element of this game. Now, flipping it over to the other side, I think offensively for the Ravens, really it comes down to protecting Lamar Jackson, particularly on the edges. That's been. In, in recent weeks, certainly the offense's Achilles heel, I would say, is, has been edge protection. And now you're going, by the way, against two of the best pass rushers, most talented pass rushers in the league in Nick Bosa and then Chase Young, who they traded for at the deadline. That is a tough challenge. And I think that they're going to have to have some really creative scheme. Pat Ricard, who we just talked to, is going to be a big part of that, blocking on the edge, trying to, to slow those guys down. You know, the Ravens, I think, generally speaking, have done a good job of coming up with some scheme to like for against miles Garrett, right? Generally miles Garrett has not wrecked the Ravens shop. They've schemed pretty well against these premier pass rushers and they're going to need more of that, whether that's quick passing game, whether that's screens, whether that's, you know, it's going to have to keeping them off balance, ha- sending different blockers at them, you know, whether it's Pat Ricard coming across a lot of pooling blockers, they don't know who they're going to be hit hit by right if they're allowed to just pin their ears back and keep attacking ronnie stanley morgan moses and the other tackles i think it's going to be a tough time for the ravens i mean on ronnie stanley i think a question for him is going to be health he left the game yeah. on sunday to be evaluated for potential concussion is he back on the practice field over the course of this week is he a full participant is he clear from the concussion protocol if he's not able to play then it's going to be pat mccary yeah. i think there's going to be a lot of stress on these tackles whether it's mccary or stanley or both of them and then on the right side i would think that the ravens probably continue with the rotation of Morgan Moses and Daniel Falele. Mm -hmm. I think that both those guys probably continue to play. I think that this could be a quick strike offense where the Ravens try to get the ball out of their hands quickly, out of Mm -hmm. Lamar's hands quickly. I I don't know. There's going to be. We're not going to be looking at whatever three point eight seconds. I don't think that there there will be. I also don't know how much the Ravens are going to try as much as is a goal every week, and especially I thought it was a goal uh, against the Rams coming out of the bye. I just don't know how many opportunities you're going to have to push the ball down the field when you have Bosa and Chase Young coming at you. I mean, the, both those guys are number two overall picks. Well, They're a lot incredibly of, athletic, great players. A lot of those opportunities have come on extended plays. You know, Lamar making something happen. It hasn't been necessarily the on-time drop, five-step drop. The Rams, know, though, was the attempts. Drop. The Rams game, it was the attempts down the field. There was, right. It was far more attempts down Certainly. the field. I just don't know that they're going to they're not, I don't know that they're going to call as many deep shots in this game as they did two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, what, but what I'm saying is it doesn't necessarily take a require a call deep shot to get a deep shot no, of course. because the Ravens yeah. have had a number of those on extended plays by Lamar yep. Jackson. And so, sure, I agree with you. I think they probably will try to get the ball out of Lamar's hands quicker. And especially the 49ers, I'm sure, are looking at the tape from Jacksonville and saying, all right, you know, they are not, the offense wasn't as on time. Let's sit here and make him hold the ball. And then we're going to finish those plays where the Jags could not. Mm -hmm. Right. And it'll be the the Ravens mission to say, no, we can play differently than we did this past week. And and the Ravens offense has has done a good job of that. Right. They have been a chameleon, as Dan Orlovsky described uh, offensively. They've been able to do it in so many different ways. Can they continue to change that up and and keep the 49ers defense, which is, you know, just like we talk about the Ravens (laughs) defense, uh, uh, one of the best defenses in the league. Can they keep them on their heels? Yeah, you're looking at the weakness, and you're like, okay, they're so great on offense. They're probably not as good on defense. No, they're they're great on defense. They've got, you know, there's debate between the linebacker, who's got the better linebacker tandem in in the Ravens or the 49ers. They've got Fred Warner, who's also one of the best in the game. And so I, I think that, establishing the running game early on will be important for the Ravens. I think if you can put yourself in second and five, that's going to be a much better scenario than trying to climb out of holes where Bosa and Young can feast. Yeah, And so I think that that's going to be 
like having early down success that's typically done through the run game. You know, maybe they try to keep them off balance with that quick strike stuff that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But I think that having early down success and putting yourself in second and third and manageable is going to be a really important point for this offense. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. You, you just don't want Bosa and Young pinning their ears back. You, that is the last That's thing. a bad recipe. That is a bad recipe in this game. I, I think, you know, Lamar, his legs uh, are, are certainly a component against that 49ers defense. He, he can... He did that before against them. Back in 2019, he had a pretty good day in the rain. I'm sure you remember that game. Oh, yeah. Lamar had a great day running the ball. Now, whatever, things have changed. Their personnel has changed and all that. But I think that we saw in Jacksonville the difference that Lamar made. He put up 97 rushing yards. I think him running the ball is another important element. And really why the Ravens, part of why the Ravens have had so much success against NFC teams. And Lamar has had so much success against NFC teams is, you know, he's not facing them as often. Mm-hmm. It's it's a different challenge for them, unlike other challenges that they see. So I think the Ravens have to find ways to kind of keep him active as a runner also. So you do buy into the whole AFC, Lamar versus the NFC. He's yeah. had a ton of success thing. And I think that the familiarity thing is a valid point. The Ravens play the 49ers once every four years. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, they faced Lamar Jackson one time yep. in his career. That's a difficult assignment when you have to then get ready for him in this type of game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't think that that's by coincidence. I mean, mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson wins a lot of games, period. Yeah. But I, I do think, and I also just think that AFC football and NFC football are a little, can be a little bit different brands mm-hmm. of football. Now, the 49ers are a really tough physical team. So they're kind of the exception. They're ex- the exception, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think these teams are, 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 there's a lot of similar things. There's a lot of yeah. similar teams to how they're built and how they're constructed. I, I just think that like, they're, they're physical, hard-nosed. Co- I think that these coaches both respect each other. I think you know John yeah. Harbaugh's got a lot of uh, respect for Shanahan and the way he does things. I think that these teams are just well-built. And I also think it's like, I think that on Tuesday, whoever wins this game, in addition to being viewed at that point, is the best team in the league. You know, that's basically it. Tuesday oh, morning, 100%. the conversation is going to be, whoever wins this game is the best team in the league. And I also think whoever wins this game, that quarterback is going to be the front runner in the MVP conversation. Yeah. That's a conversation that uh, John Harbaugh is putting off to another day. Yeah. But uh, he's not I, interested in the MVP he, votes he's not. and all that, the power rankings. He doesn't care. No. Which I wouldn't expect him to. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think yeah, that you're right. Assuming that both, you know, the quarterbacks play well, whoever wins this game is probably is in the driver's seat. Yeah. I would, I would agree with that notion. And, and heck, I mean, Christian McCaffrey, I think yeah, he's, he's the other one too. He's yeah. a contender in the MVP race. You look at those numbers. So to me, I'm I'm more concerned about Christian McCaffrey than I am Brock Purdy beating the Ravens. Well, Brock Purdy said this week that he thinks Christian McCaffrey should be the MVP. So yep. he's deflecting and giving Christian McCaffrey his praise. So I hope that uh, the conversation on Tuesday is not which 49ers should be the MVP. Yes. I think that that's something that all Ravens <laughs> can agree on. But, but something that I do want to discuss is which Raven should be be the dog you know well, we, we revealed it we revealed it we re- i'm looking at this sign i'm looking at the poster board here right all right let's get it out <laughs> all right we already know it's you got to slide it this way a little bit yeah you go you got to slide it over this way slide here. it over this oh, way oh, oh, here we go there we go <laughs> but we got to slap it on yeah isaiah likely the dog <laughs> of the week for week 15 there we go it's looking good yeah, Isaiah Likely. How about we? How about we double dog? How about <laughs> we just go back to back? Go well, to San Francisco uh, and go out there and have a game. Uh, honestly, a player who who the only double dog who we do have on here is Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, but we've never had a back to back. No, but I I actually think that this could be a huge. This is a big game for Kyle Hamilton. Which, by the way, it's also big that Marcus Williams is healthy enough to play in this game, so that Kyle Hamilton can play that kind of nickel role that he's used to playing. Yeah, I think that's a big deal. Yeah, I think that I think that Kyle. He's, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him. He's making plays in the backfield, so he's going to be big in stopping Christian McCaffrey. He's going to be big at keeping Debo Samuel from taking a screen and bringing it 40 yards to the house. He's going to yep. also be big against George Kittle and the physical brand of football that he plays. I, I, Kyle's been excellent all season. He should be a pro bowler. Vote for him uh, if you haven't done so, but I, I think that this is a big week for him. Yep. You know, Garrett, with uh, Christmas coming up here, what the best time is, what's the best moment of Christmas? When you... Come down the stairs that's, and all the presents are there underneath correct. the tree. And what present do you look for? When you when you first come down, you lay your eyes on the presents. Which one do you want to open first? The biggest one. The biggest <laughs> present of all! We'll be beating the 49ers! Let's go! <laughs>